because right now we have new tendency in Belarus that uh, that um, trafficking in human beings is connected to labor exploitation of men as well. Um, and also via mass media, we can, of course, um, distribute information about dangers of being trafficked. Uh, for the period um, of eight years, last year, I think, has been more than 430 interviews for mass media, and we have created internet sites, so you can gain more information from it as well, because it has an English version. Uh, as to prevention and education, it works with the representatives of the risk groups, so-called potential victims of trafficking, and forms of work include, however, are not limited to lectures, seminars, trainings, uh, exhibition of some artistic or documentary films, uh, performances, and so on. Uh, also, Nostrada experts are authors and developers of methodical materials widely used in Belarus that's allowing to improve strategies on prevention of human tra trafficking. And the important component of prevention education is hotline, of course. Um, uh, our hotline giving the information on the questions of safe departure and stay abroad since 2001. As of May uh, 2009, the hotline has received around uh, 14,500 phone calls and provided more than 600 emails. Uh, special attention is paid to the ethical principles of hotline activity. All calls are anonymous. The staff adheres to the principles of confidentiality, understanding that stories told by clients belong only to them. We understand that uh, that's the only way to earn trust of persons who address for help and support. Uh, hotline consultants provide information, uh, provide the clients with the information about possibilities, um, rules of safe travel abroad with the different purposes, like purposes of employment, marriage, studies abroad. Besides, hotline provides informational support to the victims of trafficking or who are um, on their way home and to the relatives searching for missing people abroad. The major part of those who call hotline are interested in employment abroad. It's around 45%. The marriage <coughs> divorce issues with a foreigner is also interested to around 14%. Uh, last rally gets about 8% of calls, annual calls from women survivors of trafficking or from their relatives. And over, uh, it's remarkable, I think, over 50% of all the victims applied to our services came through the hotline. So it's a very good tool uh, to indicate the victim. It's a tool and a way victims can address us. Uh, totally, the uh, geography of migration covers 91 countries, including rather exotic places for Belarus, like uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Peru, Jordan, uh, and, uh, however, there are five leading countries for destination, and they're not changed for past years. And they are Germany, Russia, the USA, Great Britain, and Italy. Um, as to the social assistance, it is concentrated on granting a package of reintegration services to women suffered from traffic and men right now. Uh, in, uh, during this period of our uh, activity, we received more than uh, 300, <coughs> almost 400 cases of trafficking and appeals from victims or their relatives. Victims of human trafficking require various kinds of support, medical, psychological, legal, financial, and elementary human support. All services, of course, are free of charge. Uh, some victims can apply, for example, for training courses. Uh, we had a case of men suffered from labor exploitation in Russia, and uh, he wanted to change his profession as a worker and become a driver. So we arranged training courses, uh, driving courses for him, and it also became a part of his reintegration and recovery, uh, psychological recovery from traumatic experience. So summarizing our um, services for victims of trafficking, we are ready for meeting the survivor on their homecoming, providing shelter, to run shelter, to women victims of trafficking, unfortunately, we have capacities to uh, place on the women, social, emotional, and informational support, facilitation to psychological assistance and to long-term um, uh, psychotherapeutical assistance, 
free medical assistance, including narrow consultations of specialists, because, for example, in our rural areas, it's very hard to find any narrow specialists. They are available only in Minsk and the capital, for example. Financial and humanitarian support upon the needs assessment. Facilitation to professional legal assistance, including uh, sue the traffickers and claim for compensations. Assistance in education, vocational <coughs> training, and employment. And um, to the end of uh, my presentation, I would tell you two stories of successful and really challenging reintegration. Uh, probably I, come, I, I begin with the story of successful reintegration, because it's more willing to me. Uh, Anna was born and has grown in a small city. However, after finishing her school, she moved to Minsk, to the capital. There she lived with her sister um, in the rented apartments. Uh, the situation was very difficult uh, for both of them because her sister uh, had uh, already a child. So they took any job they were. Um, they, were they, they could accept any proposal for work. For example, Anya needed things for selling, sold cosmetics, did makeup and manicure, and still they can hardly survive in Minsk. Once an acquaintance, a uh, company's owner, has offered Anya to work as a dancer in a club in Greece. Anya obtained a tourist visa and was persuaded by that company owner that this visa would be changed into a work permit in Greece. The company also paid all travel expenses. Anya flew with a group of other girls recruited by the same company. Uh, for the first several months, Anna indeed worked in a nightclub as a dancer. However, she was paid very little, and living conditions were very poor. They were very poor. Uh, they were promised to get all earned money, uh, what uh, she wanted to send them back to the sister in Belarus. Uh, but soon Anna was sold to Albanian pimps and uh, she had been transported from one place to another, from one club to another. There were girls from different countries, Moldavians, Ukrainians, uh, some Armenians, Romanians. The pimps strictly observed the girls and did not allow them to communicate with each other. A Russian-speaking pimp watched Anna. The <coughs> girls lived in dirty cellars, slept on the ground. They were deprived of food. They were severely beaten for any fault Extinguished cigarettes on bodies and draped. But engaged, being engaged in the consummation and prostitution, Anna had to drink a lot. One of the clients liked Anna very much, and uh, he brought her for the whole night, for example, and Anna had the opportunity to sleep enough and eat. Uh, he constantly moved with her to another club. Um, uh, very soon, he reported to the police and in one of the evenings a police raid was organized. The Sanna was rescued. Local police helped her with making documents and returning to Belarus. Uh, Anna was returned home. She reported to the police and testified against traffickers, traffic and dealers in Minsk. And right now she is engaged in long-lasting therapy, but she is living in her small city. Nobody knows about her story. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is trying to survive by uh, to earn money by knitting for them. So she has some handicrafts in her hands, enabling her to earn money. And another very challenging story, I would say very bad story to my mind. Olga is 14 years old girl. She was born in the small town of Minsk Oblast. The family situation where she was brought up was very difficult because uh, her father, father committed suicide when she was uh, very little and her mother was uh, alcohol addicted and periodically was jailed. Olga began smoking when she was six years old. Until the trafficking situation started, uh, the girl was living with her grandfather and grandmother but actually without any um, parent parental support. Uh, for example, uh, she was left on her own completely, she missed classes, spent nights at friends' houses and cellars. Olga was sold by a female relative for a small amount of money into prostitution to work in Moscow. 